This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Karen Reed. Well, I can't say the trial because that's done at least for now. We'll find out shortly. I believe on the 22nd uh, is the uh, the next uh, status hearing date to determine if they're going to go forward and try and prosecute her again and on what charges specifically they're going to do that. But before that's even happened, because it's the Karen Reed trial and everything is chaotic, it just got more chaotic. And I'm wondering how this is going to play in the minds of the prosecutors in terms of what they're going to decide to do going forward. Joining me to discuss Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program. What I'm talking about specifically in the chaos of all of this is Karen Reed and her attorney. Pictures have come out, and it's just pictures. We don't know more of the context here, but one could glean a couple things off of it. We're talking about the picture where the arm of uh, the attorney is over her, draping down. Like, it looked like, kind of like a high school hug, almost, where like the, 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 the football player and the cheerleader are super tight like that. You don't really see a lot of that, but... Uh, you know, almost, you know, almost kind of touching some areas. And then the other one down below around her waist, uh, and we've seen multiple camera angles uh, of this, looks a little more intimate than just attorney-client relationship. Uh, based on that, uh, where do you think uh, this is going to go? What do you think this could affect? Well, she's adding more data points to to who she is um i know you got a lot of karen reed fans again but objectively you know we we saw in the text messaging she was doing the night of the tragic death that you know she's got a lot of she got a lot of issues Mm -hmm. um and she has a lot of unhealthy relationships um that she surrounds herself with and she causes and i think this is just another manifestation of more crazy this is if if you could pick something not to do to ensure that the world is on your side, this is it. I mean, do not even have the perception of dating. See, I'm not even saying this whether she is or isn't. Yeah, I don't know. That's an argument. Yeah, it doesn't matter what truth is in most of these things. It matters what the perception is. The perception of the of the media. The perception of a potential um, jury. When you have the perception that you're dating your lawyer, it's just validating the prosecutions at, you know, claim that you're nuts. There you go. That's what I think. I think it hurts her immensely. It hurts. It hurts. I'll tell you as a, as the defense attorney, his career is going to, is in jeopardy as well. I mean, who wants to hire this guy? I mean, just, it's just, yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of issues there uh, with, with what's going on here uh, with, with Jackson and her. Uh, The, the other thing that, that has been uh, on my mind is the, it's not within her control, but it is what it is. The celebrity status to which she has uh, rose to, at least in that area of the country. People wanting autographs, people wanting pictures with her. In fact, that's how this incident actually occurred. They stopped to take pictures with people because they wanted pictures with a woman who's accused of killing Boston police officer John O'Keefe with a hung jury. And there's a lot of evidence that points that she probably hit him, whether she knew it or not. Um it's it's kind of sickening, you know, the, to to get this status and be willing to then participate in the game. I get people are going to do what they're going to do. You have extreme, and I'm not saying if you support Karen Reed, you're crazy. But if you're out there camping in front of the courthouse and you're from like England, uh, you might have some mental health issues if this is something that you feel that strongly about. Uh, but people are going to do what they're going to do. They're going to fall in love with different characters, good, bad, the ugly, whatever. Uh, and, and they're going to assign this, this celebrity status, whether it, it should be or not. And I don't think it should be in this case. But it's your choice then, though, as the defendant to go, I'm going to participate in this. I'm going to go sign those autographs or I'm going to walk quietly from the courtroom to my car and get the hell out of there and not be part of the circus. She clearly enjoys being part of the the circus uh that i don't think is going to play very well especially when we know more about how she was treating john o'keefe from those voicemails and such again this is just my conjecture on it but seemed to be a bit of a narcissist wanting to have more attention telling john basically in 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 no uncertain words that she wants more attention than she's getting 
than the kids. This is a man who has become the, the parent to his niece and nephew whose parents died. He's stepping up. He's being that person. And when you're a parent, the kids come first, no matter what. If you're a parent, you know that. Karen Reed, not a parent. No clue. I've dated people like that. And then it lasts very long because my daughter will always come first over any girlfriend. Uh, but it seems women in that sort of situation sometimes with a narcissistic pattern don't quite grasp that. And maybe you don't if you don't have kids. Maybe just something that was as parents we get. Uh, but those factors, those things, they don't look good on her. They, they don't look good on really any human being to have those sort of demands on her boyfriend uh, and then eating up all this attention for potentially murdering him. Yeah. Um, good news doesn't sell. Bad news sells. And yeah. and this is exactly what she's doing. I mean, people don't remember average days. They remember days that are really, really awesome or really, really challenging and traumatic. And that's why people gravitate towards these things. Her behavior is com completely congruent with someone who is young and immature. Yeah. You know, regardless of actual age, you know, when you have those kind of insecurities spiking up and you're in the, you're in the look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me phase of life, which mm -hmm. some people never grow out of. Yeah. These are the behaviors that manifest around it, which also gives a, a really deeper understanding of why defense was possibly using the claim that there was a conspiracy against Karen because of how, you know, because of this and it, as I've always said, I don't think it was a conspiracy. It was a group of people that saw an easier way to place it on her. And why? She's unlikable. Yeah. You know, if at the closer you are to her in this group was, you know, so again, as you just laid it out, let's just take it as you laid it out, that you have a, a father that's taking care of kids and that's compelling. And then you have this, this self-centered person coming in and, you know, kind of trying to disrupt this family dynamic of this compassionate story of this father, this cop, this public servant mm -hmm. taking care of family. Remove all the unhealthy behaviors of alcohol and, and partying and whatever was taking place. But when you just frame it like you framed it, it's an easy to see reason why it would look like a conspiracy when it was actually just a group of friends looking after another friend who was trying to take care of his kids. And then you have this crazy woman coming in and disrupting the entire flow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and so all these added behaviors that she do, is doing is validating the original claim that she's nuts. Yeah. But where do you even take this anymore? I mean, it, the thing is with this, it's like a political campaign. Like I've said the whole time on this, People who are dug in, they're dug in on their sides. No matter how much evidence comes to light of this being not a very healthy human being, at least that's the perception for myself, uh, they don't care. Uh, just like, you know, you have horrible evidence coming out about political candidates. Some, I don't care. La, 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 la. Not going to hear that. Um, where do you take this? Massachusetts is not that big of a state. And everybody knows this case. Is there any place to get an unbiased jury at this point, if they decide to take it back. I don't think so. I, I think it's just, we just got to rework the charges. Yeah. I, I think what's, you know, and, and I, I did see, you know, how um, it's kind of leaked out that they were not hung jury on two of the charges uh, on like mm -hmm. the vehicular manslaughter and then the, you know, the other uh, manslaughter one. So, uh, so I, I think, like we said, like both of us have been saying since the beginning, a lot of other people have too. I think the charges were off. Yeah. Um, and I think if you can redo the charges to allow, I don't know how, because again, I'm not a lawyer, but to allow that to be a little more pragmatic mm -hmm. about the charges, which we can rely on just the facts of what is irrefutable mm -hmm. and the data and keep the charges to that so that no matter how you feel about the individual, we can move forward. I, yeah. I I see it going in that direction. It's just a reworking of the charges and refiling. I, she's got to be, there's a death that occurred. Mm -hmm. People, someone needs to be held accountable. Whether someone serves time or not, that's a different argument. But you, you kind of like in the Russ case, we we're just talking about with Alec mm -hmm. Baldwin. People, when someone dies, people need to help be held accountable mm -hmm. so that people, so, so it just can be done for the person that died, the family that's uh, surviving. And so the system can get better and then have continued faith in that system that we don't want to do wrong, bad things by others because you'll be held accountable for it. So that's part of the reason we do this is maintain tr trust and faith in our institutional organizations that 
we need to work well as a society together. And so there needs to be culpability in this. I, mean, I think a rework in the charge is, is going to be imperative just so that we don't have a hung jury again because it is so she's so divisive as an individual. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.